Hi, good morning. Um, so I'm uh, so um, Sagara basically spoke about uh, the practical side of uh, implementation side of what we are doing with governance registry five uh, when it comes to um, uh, governance as well as API management aspect and uh, the integration aspect, etc. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is the conceptual aspect of uh, what are the things that you have to focus and what are the areas that uh, are of interest. Uh, in the space of application service governance and some of the uh, things uh, that are in sync with our roadmap uh, in terms of what you have to achieve uh, in this particular space. So it is not uh, uh, a talk uh, specific to W0 technology, it is in general uh, what uh, application governance, uh, services governance is all about, etc. So Gartner defines uh, application services governance as the uh, combination of API management and uh, SOA governance. Uh, the, the two practices uh, converge together. So it is uh, about uh, delivering APIs on top of your uh, service oriented architecture kind of scenario. So there are three main things that are important in this particular um, um, space. Uh, one is the uh, life cycle governance aspect. Uh, and the uh, typical uh, uh, SOA governance uh, uh, aspects uh, that comes into the picture. And then uh, when you talk about governance, uh, you have life cycle governance in design time, <coughs> development time space, and then uh, you also have to focus on your runtime management uh, aspects as well. So um, uh, both uh, uh, design time aspects as well as <coughs> once you put the system into uh, running uh, production, uh, how you can monitor and track what is going on, etc., needs to <coughs> uh, come under the uh, runtime management aspect. And then, uh, when you think about uh, the combination of uh, uh, services as your backend and APIs fronting those services, and then applications uh, using those APIs at the front end, you have the community management aspect like who can access which APIs, who have uh, access privileges, etc. So. Uh, the publisher um, store uh, aspect of who is my community uh, 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 comes into picture and who, who plays uh, what roles and uh, what are their priorities, etc. comes into picture. <coughs> so uh, those three dimensions are important when we are talking about uh, application services governance. So since it is the convergence of uh, API management and uh, uh, serv uh, uh, services governance uh, spaces. Um, uh, the challenges um, are related to uh, both API management aspect and the uh, so, uh, so, uh, SOA governance aspect. So uh, uh, they are very uh, familiar uh, challenges uh, if you work in an enterprise setup. Um, how do you manage end-to-end uh, -end planning and uh, what about change management? Um, how do you track your uh, efficiencies, especially when it comes to budget and cost efficiencies, and what are the uh, uh, risks associated with uh, your new deployments, existing deployments, uh, 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 associated with changes, etc. And then, obviously, the when things go wrong, how you can get to the bottom of the problems that you have in the system uh, in terms of uh, root cause analysis and impact analysis. So those are the uh, uh, key challenges uh, that you have to face uh, when you're dealing with uh, API management and services uh, governance. And then how can we focus in terms of overcoming those challenges? So there are four main things that you can do uh, in order to uh, overcome the challenges. Uh, one thing is <coughs> obviously if you have a services infrastructure, you got to bring in service management. That was uh, basically the rationale behind uh, SOA governance to start with. And then uh, um, you also need to uh, do monitor the performance of your infrastructure. <clears throat> and then uh, when people are developing and using APIs, developing services, etc., you have to make sure that uh, you enforce standards across the organization. And uh, you have to have uh, visibility across the system. So service management is about uh, having knowledge in terms of what are the services you have, where are these services located, etc., etc. So. Uh, uh, locating the services and indexing them, uh, being capable of searching for existing services uh, matters a lot. Then uh, uh, monitoring performance is about evaluating and keeping track of economies of usage, right? Uh, who is using, are they really being used? 
and uh, what are the peak times, what are the uh, 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 problem times, etc. when it comes to uh, uh, a running system. Then uh, standing, uh, 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 making sure you enforce standards also means that we have control when it comes to ensuring best practices when people are using services, implementing services, uh, exposing APIs and uh, consuming APIs. And then uh, 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 visibility is about, you have knowledge about once you deploy the system, uh, do we know what is happening with the runtime system? Are they really being used? Uh, who is using them? What are the consumption trends? Uh, uh, is it in sync with our design principles? Is it in sync with what we uh, expected? Uh, the system to be, etc. So, uh, um, so uh, you saw the challenges, uh, uh, and then this is how you overcome those challenges. And then, uh, uh, once you have the system in place, how do you keep measure? Uh, how do you keep track whether you are making progress or whether you are successful? So, uh, um, uh, if you are successful, there would be no duplication in terms of uh, uh, services. People will not re-implement the same services, and then uh, uh, people will not try and re-expose the same API over and over again. Rather, they will think about reuse uh, rather than duplication. Uh, and then uh, when you have APIs, you also need to know, uh, as well as services, uh, what's the percentage of uh, internal usage, what's the percentage of external usage, and do we know the, the balance between uh, who, what is being used inside and what is being used outside, etc., matters a lot. And then uh, 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 the systematic delivery is obviously uh, uh, an objective for any uh, IT infrastructure project. Uh, uh, you have to make sure that you meet uh, timelines, deadlines, and then uh, uh, your uh, consumers, when it comes to the community aspect, are happy with uh, your um, uh, versioning changes, uh, the changes that you make. That uh, the upgrades that they have to do, etc., and then uh, 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 <coughs> uh, by monitoring the runtime system, you can make sure that you know what is happening with the system, so that you know how to tweak. So that is about uh, maximizing the business value. If, uh, for example, some APIs are not being used the way they meant to be, you can analyze what is happening, where are the where are the bottlenecks, what should be tuned, uh, etc., in terms of operations and get rid of barriers to use uh, can be handled in that space. And then uh, uh, you can keep track of with the best practices which are being defined, are being used by the people and are adhered to by people. And then uh, uh, automated error handling, security enforcement, and uh, service level agreement monitoring. Uh, all these aspects, if you keep measuring, you can make sure that uh, the system that you put in place is successful and you're making progress uh, in terms of uh, API management and um, uh, service uh, governance uh, challenges that you had. So um, uh, Sagar explained in the previous talk in detail how uh, governance registry firewall is uh, going to redefine the space uh, when it comes to WSU2 technology uh, in this uh, um, uh, um, services, um, application services uh, uh, governance space. And then obviously we have the uh, our own API manager product, and they are seamlessly integrating with each other uh, when it comes to achieving these objectives. Uh, when it comes to your deployments, uh, so um, you don't have to worry about the component integration, etc. Uh, you can also deploy, uh, uh, for example, our governance registry with a heterogeneous API management product as well, and then uh, achieve success. And then uh, when it comes to runtime monitoring. Uh, the uh, new release of, uh, uh, we renamed uh, BAM into DAS, uh, Data Analytics Server. Uh, it has a, a, a whole new design perspective in terms of uh, monitoring the runtime system. So uh, these are the three main components of the platform that will help you achieve uh, the aspirations of uh, 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 applications, uh, services governance uh, in, the, uh, in your implementations. Uh, there, are, there are other aspects, obviously, we ha also have the identity manager, uh, etc., uh, that integrates into the system. But these three, main <coughs> these, uh, three products mainly uh, uh, help you uh, implement your solutions uh, in your uh, solution. 
So um, uh, most of these uh, areas were uh, again explained by Sagar. Uh, the key focus areas uh, uh, in this space are the life cycle management aspect of it and then policy enforcement uh, of uh, uh, once you have the policies in the organization and then how do you keep track of what is happening with the system, the visibility aspect and the monitoring aspect. So when you talk about life cycle management, there are three aspects. Uh, you basically can manage the life cycle, so you uh, know what the services are, what are the uh, APIs are in your system, and obviously which state of uh, each of these APIs and services are in, in terms of development, production, QA, etc and whether the APIs are published to the external or they are still being uh, uh, developed or tested out, etc. So from development to retirement, you can manage the life cycle uh, uh, using uh, uh, the tools that you get. And then uh, uh, um, uh, when you are uh, dealing with uh, uh, keeping track, like um, seeing what is going on, uh, uh, a one-stop shop UI is important in order to see uh, a given API, what are the versions available, can you manage uh, those uh, APIs using this UI, and then obviously uh, promotion, demotion aspects of the life cycle. And when you talk about a life cycle aspect, obviously every organization have their own tweaks to the life cycle rather than the uh, predefined, pre-canned life cycle aspects. So can you extend and uh, plug in your life cycle extension points is an important part. So uh, you need to look at uh, the extension capabilities when it comes to life cycle management aspect. Like how can you uh, do your life cycle uh, on top of this tool. Then policy enforcement has four main areas. Uh, controlled access to the APIs and services. Um, uh, that is basically in relation to identity management and access management. And then uh, uh, performance and quality of uh, service aspects and um, things such as throttling and how do you deal with uh, uh, SLAs aspects, then uh, uh, compliance uh, and audit capabilities, how do you make sure uh, uh, that you, uh, your community is uh, adhering to the best practices that you define, so you, do you have audit capabilities in the system, and then uh, uh, data security and privacy uh, obviously is an important aspect, uh, and making sure that uh, consistency is guaranteed and <coughs> sensitive data is uh, not exposed out, etc. <clears throat> then we have the visibility and monitoring aspect. Uh, one of the things is that once you have, as I uh, explained earlier, you have your back-end services, then you have uh, the APS that you expose to the uh, external world, and there are applications that are, being uh, that are using these APIs, etc. Uh, um, do you have an integrated view of, okay, these applications are using these APIs and they are consuming these uh, services, and what's the flow uh, in terms of... Uh, 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 the requests coming in and uh, how are they being used, latency aspects. Uh, so you have a, whether you have a unified view of all these uh, uh, components that are interconnected. And then can you figure out uh, what application are using which APIs and then what are those uh, APIs consuming in terms of backend services that you have. That's the dependency analysis aspect. Uh, so what's the connection between these? So you, you can visualize at a high level uh, uh, what, what is happening with your system, and that is what we are the governance registry five. The dependency analysis tools come uh, really handy to track the connections between uh, the components that you have in the system. Then uh, uh, monitoring uh, the usage details, performance metrics, and then drill down uh, into the reports and seeing uh, where are the bottlenecks, etc., is important. And then uh, uh, um, various tools like the log analytics tools, uh, the management tools, uh, when it comes to, uh, you, you might be having your third party uh, tools that are already there, whether the system can be plugged into those uh, monitoring tools in order to make sure that uh, uh, you, uh, you, you uh, make your familiar tools integrated so that uh, uh, you have a, a unified view for the rest of the world that within your organization. <clears throat> so um, uh, I tried to help catch some of the time. Uh, I know I'm ahead of time, but uh, the earlier talk was going a bit uh, um, later as well. So uh, let me finish a bit faster. 
So I, I spoke about uh, uh, what application services governance is all about. It is all about uh, bringing the best practices of API management and service governance into uh, uh, one world and converge them. And uh, you have governance and management aspects uh, uh, defined in here. Uh, the three aspects of design time, development time, and runtime monitoring and uh, uh, lifecycle management and policy enforcement are important in this space. And obviously, uh, once you have the full system, whether you can keep track of what is happening and visibility, dependency analysis and monitoring aspect is important. So um, that's about it.